Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and you may remember at CES this year we saw quite a lot of stuff coming out from EVGA, one of them being the Z390 Dark Motherboard and pretty much as soon as I saw it I knew I had to have it, so here it is. So let's check it out and find out, well, what it's all about. Okay, so starting with the packaging, the first thing that I actually want to make clear is that EVGA, just like with all of the kind of, you know, uh, previous generation of dark series boards, they're kind of going for the no frills approach. So you won't find any RGB on this. You won't find any kind of unnecessary extras. It's aimed at, I guess, the hardcore overclockers and people who really want to kind of push the boundaries of their system. In this case, on a Z390 chipset. So even just translate into the box, you'll see that straight away, kind of, you know, reminiscent of the name, I guess, dark. Everything is black. There's nothing really unnecessary on here. There's a, a little bit of information about some of the features, USB 3.1 Gen 2, like you'd expect from Z390, two-way SLI and physics, but that is pretty much it. Obviously there's the usual logos that you'd expect from Intel and that is powered by sound core uh, 3D audio. That's pretty much it. And I actually quite like that. I like the fact that there's nothing, you know, really unnecessarily uh, printed onto the box. Now, taking it out straight away, it's a pretty heavy box considering, um, you know, uh, as far as motherboards go. So we're actually expecting, I guess, quite a lot of accessories inside. So opening up the inner box, just to kind of go through things quite quickly, we've got the EVGA Z390 Dark Installation Quick Guide. So this just kind of gives you a, a brief glance of what the board looks like and opening it up just gives you all of the information that you're gonna need about the board. The thing is, I guess, with this board, the type of people that it's aimed at, they're probably not even going to use this. But, you know, it's nice to have uh, regardless. There is a little kind of a uh, catalog just explaining, you know, the EVGA do make various different products. So this is everything from your VGA to your motherboard to your case, power supply and so forth. And then the fact that there is different ranges uh, from within that. So accessory wise, this is probably one of the heaviest things in there. We do have a set of standoffs and there's a very, very good reason for this. Uh, if any of you have ever seen any EVGA boards in the past, so X299 Dark, for instance, you'll know that there's a PCB inside and and uh, these kind of, you know, go with it to actually kind of manufacture your own test bench, which is a really cool thing and something I'm really keen to, to actually look at in here. We have some M.2 thermal pads. So obviously if you are using NVMe drives, they can get very hot. So we've got some thermal pads. A case badge sticker because everyone will be lost without this, but still a nice little novelty to have. Uh, we've got some ProBit cables, so for anyone who is going down the hardcore overclocking route, obviously you are going to want to use these ProBit cables just to kind of give you some true representations of the various voltages going through your CPU and other components that are connected into the motherboard. We have an SLI bridge because this does support two-way SLI, so always nice to have. Personally, I prefer kind of, you know, if you were going to go SLI and you had, say, some EVGA cards going for the nice EVGA branded one as opposed to just the flexible one, but that is another cost that's added in. We have some screws, we have some more ProBit cables. Because it is Z390, obviously we do get, as I said uh, earlier, USB 3.1 Gen 2, but we also get Wi-Fi, so it comes with two Wi-Fi antennas as well. Some more M.2 thermal pads. And one of the things that I guess I've been begging for, for from brands since, well, the beginning of time, a USB stick with your drivers on there. Admittedly, I don't even, you know, typically I, I wouldn't use one of these or a driver CD. I'd just go and download them from uh, the internet. But if you don't have another computer at your disposal, this is going to be really, really handy. So thank you, EVGA, for finally actually doing this. I've been, I guess, asking for years for someone to do this. And it's nice to see. I actually personally don't know anyone who uses a driver CD, uh, who, who uses a DVD drive at all anymore. Um, so there you go. SATA cables. So we have some SATA cables. Sadly, none of these ones are right angled and these ones aren't either. So we've got four SATA cables in total, not right angled, which I do say is sad, but you are actually see on the motherboard why you don't need right ang angled cables. Just kind of came to me then, but yeah, you'll, you'll get the general gist of it uh, when you see the motherboard. And then we have the IO plate as well. Now taking this part of the box out, I'm gonna get to the motherboard in a little bit because there's one more thing that I wanna show you. And as I say, this is something that they've been doing on their dartboards for, I wanna say two generations now, and it looks pretty badass. So even if you don't use it for kind of its intended purposes of uh, having it as like a test bench or anything like that. I just think this 
up on your wall would look absolutely amazing so maybe we could you know put it up somewhere uh, either way I think it looks absolutely cool so this just gives you a general kind of view of what the motherboard looks like and it allows you to kind of I guess troubleshoot stuff find out a little bit more about the features and so forth so I actually really like this and another thing that I really wish motherboard manufacturers would do but I guess if they did it now or Zeus Gigabyte MSI they'd be kind of deemed as copying EVGA and then finally we have the big tamale itself the EVGA Z390 Dark. So uh, let's clear the desk off and take a look at this absolute beast of a board. So let's start by looking at the board and talking about form factor because this is, well, pretty different to any other Z390 board out there. To start with, it is an EATX form factor. So you can see it's just that little bit wider. Typically an ATX form factor would kind of finish off about here, but it would be the same kind of length. Now, even though it is EATX, it ha actually has some pretty cool styling on it in terms of these cutouts. And there's a very good reason why, because they put the power delivery down here um, in terms of the 24 pin and the eight pins instead of them being up here. You also notice kind of design wise that everything's been kind of rotated ever so slightly. So there's a reason for this purely because uh, airflow. So when you actually look at having this inside your chassis, you're gonna have airflow coming straight across here. Nothing's gonna be obstructed up here. So memory slots are up here now instead of sort of here. So again, they've just really kind of thought about the general design and the types of people who are gonna be using this board, how they're gonna be using it in terms of, you know, pushing, I guess their components to the limits and that's obviously gonna generate heat. So trying to get the best airflow across this is vitally important. Now in terms of the overall styling, as the sort of name would suggest, it is a dark board. So there's no RGB, it's literally dark everywhere. So we have a black PCB, the only kind of real color we get on here is from a few kind of capacitors that are down here, uh, a few little colored connectors down here. But other than that, all of the heat sinks are nice and chunky and black and dark and just, I don't know, everything that you'd expect from the Z390 dark board. So I actually really like the design of this and I do like the fact that it's kind of gold around the, just kind of on the outside on the trim. Uh, on the back of it, again, very, very simple. It's a black PCB. It has a few little gold accents on there, but no kind of frills like i said at the beginning of this video they haven't added anything unnecessary so i'm actually you know really hoping that performance is going to be at its peak for this board and that's something i actually want to talk about so we're not technically going to be benchmarking this in this video if that's something that you want to see in another video then that's definitely something that we will address and we'll do but z390 boards typically do perform very very similar uh, similarly, so similarly, sim similarly, sim yeah, simil similarly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I just want to sort of talk through, you know, the general sort of features of the board and stuff like that. And then if you want to see something maybe a little bit different involving overclocking, then we'll do that in a later video. But I digress. Let's move on to some of the features. So starting with the CPU socket, uh, as I say, everything has been kind of rotated ever so slightly, but it doesn't take away from the CPU support. So this is still Z a Z390 motherboard, which means that we have uh, 1150X socket support. It does obviously support uh, the i9-9900K, which I've actually got in a test bench behind me. And like I say, if you want a video of us kind of, you know, seeing how far we can push that with this board, then we will slap it in here and do something with that. Uh, because of obviously the way that everything is rotated, um, you might expect some problems, but there is no issues with uh, clearance on coolers and things like that, purely because of the way that it has been rotated and the fact that you only have two memory slots, which we will get into a little bit later. In terms of power delivery, so around the CPU socket, we have a 17 phase power design, 12 of them for the vCPU, and then uh, the rest are kind of split, you know, uh, across the other areas of it. Uh, in terms of getting that power delivery to the CPU, we have a single 24 pin and two eight pin connectors. And I actually really like the fact that these are all over here. Not only does it kind of, you know, give you this cool styling with this cutout, but it just allows you to kind of cable management, uh, do your cable management just that little bit better. So instead of having kind of a cable coming up here, if your chassis doesn't support uh, cutouts and things like that, everything is just in one location, which is really, really nice. The only other power delivery that you will find on the board is a single six pin down here, just to give you some extra power delivery to the expansion slots, which we will talk through uh, again later on in the video. So one thing that a lot of people are gonna comment on this board is the fact that it only has two dim slots now generally on a z390 board you would expect four obviously two uh, operating in dual channel each but with this there's a very good reason why it only does have two slots generally it will give you higher bandwidth so if this board did have four memory slots then you'd only get speeds of up to maybe 4133 i mean only 
only here. Like, it's so slow. 4133 megahertz. That's just pish posh. Whatever. But with these two slots, you can actually get 4600 megahertz and beyond through overclocking. Obviously, a lot of that is going to come down to the silicon lottery, your CPU, your cooling, your power delivery, and so much more. But it does give you that kind of, you know, possibility to kind of go that far. In terms of capacities, it uh, will support up to 32 gigabytes in total. But there's some little question inside of me that does ask if you were to go for the uh, Zadak or G skill, they do kind of the double layered uh, DDR memory modules, could you go further or is it a limitation from the board? Maybe we'll reach out to EVGA and find that out for a later video. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this board is aimed at kind of overclockers, not just pro overclockers, but people who really, you know, believe that they can get the very most out of their, um, the rest of their components on the Z390 platform. So with that in mind, there are a lot of features that are aimed specifically at overclocking. To start with, we did mention when we unboxed everything that it comes with two ProBit uh, connectors, which as you can see, just up by the memory slots here, these are the connectors themselves. This will allow you to kind of monitor the voltages in real time. We also have some debug LEDs uh, on here we have various buttons for clearing CMOS and power buttons reset buttons we also have a BIOS update USB sometimes we've seen features like a BIOS uh, USB on the back of the board but they don't want to take away from some of the features that you need on the rear IO so instead they've put it directly on the board because I kind of feel that for the majority of users, they're maybe never going to update their BIOS unless they have a problem. Whereas pro overclockers, they're going to be plugging into this and getting the latest update and sometimes even pre-release BIOS updates from the EVGA forums and other places so that they can get the very most out of their components. Other than that, we do have uh, a lot of other things as well. So we have the ability to change your BIOS as well. Uh, we have the ability to switch uh, between various BIOSes as well as turning off some of the expansion lanes. So if you are doing sort of hardcore overclocking, you're not going to need all these PCI expansion slots sort of, you know, going on at the same time. That's going to be taken away from some of the power delivery that could be pushed towards your CPU or your memory. So to get the very most from that, you can turn off various different features on this board so that you can get the very most out of your components. Now, depending on the type of overclocker you are, some people like to push their components on air, some like to do it on an AIO, some people like to do it on sort of, you know, full custom loops, and some even like to go a little bit further. So EVGA believe that they have you covered here. So to start with, we've got two CPU fan headers up here. So if you're going, I don't know, with a Noctua D15, it obviously has two fans. If you don't want to run it across the splitter, then you have your two connectors here. There are two other fan connectors just down here in the middle of the board, which I'm going to be honest, I'm not overly struck on the location of it, but there are plenty more on the board for you to look at if you don't want to use these ones. Now, one of the cool things, obviously, as I mentioned with the power delivery uh, on this side, everything is kind of, you know, right angled and, and parallel to the board. You do have two fan connectors down here, which are orientated exactly the same way, which is a really nice touch. There's a further one just here. And then the last one is just kind of tucked away over here. So plenty of fan connectors on here to, you know, negate depending on the type of system that you have, what you're hoping to do with your system, especially if you are kind of doing these hardcore overclocks and pushing your components as far as they go, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be covered. Other connectors that we do have on the board, as I mentioned, we've got the USB for uh, flashing your BIOS. There's also USB uh, type C down here. Uh, we have got some storage connectors, which I will go through as well. We have a USB 3.1 connector, which is just situated uh, next to the power delivery. We have some other USB headers, which again are parallel to the board, just making things a little bit neater and a little bit tidier. We have our usual kind of, you know, array of front panel connectors, audio connectors, and much, much more. This board pretty much has you covered no matter what the scenario is. For all of your storage needs, I'm pretty sure that EVGA have really kind of, you know, thought through this as well. So there are eight connectors in total. So these are all situated right next to each other and are all facing uh, the same way, which again is a nice kind of touch when you talk about the design and general kind of layout of this board. There's also a single U.2 connector as well. Now, if SATA isn't your thing and U.2 is not your thing, obviously there is M.2 as well. So we are able to run two M.2 drives down here. And I actually like the location of these as well, supporting up to 110 size modules. In terms of other expansion slots on here, we have three X16 slots, which depending on your configuration will operate at different speeds. So the top one is an X16 or X8. The uh, second one is X8 slash X4. And the third one is X4. There is also a native X4 slot as well. 
And also, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, if you are running an SLI configuration, this does support up to two-way SLI. So there's nothing stopping you having, you know, a pretty extreme system on a pretty damn nice looking board. Now, let's talk about the rear IO. So in terms of the rear IO, there's plenty of connections here as well. So we have a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port. Now, normally I'd be one of these people who would complain purely because I have, haven't used a PS2 mouse or keyboard in forever, but when it comes to overclocking, they can actually be one of the best features to have because USB can lead to, you know, having some issues, especially when cold booting and things like that. You also have two USB connectors down here. We have the Wi-Fi antenna connectors. We have another clear CMOS connector. So if this is inside a chassis and you can't get to the one up by all these kind of, you know, LEDs and uh, power and reset buttons, then there is one at the back of your case. We also have two ethernet connectors. Both the Ethernet connectors are run through Intel, but slightly different chipsets, but they do operate at gigabit speeds, which is always nice and handy. As this is a Z390 uh, based board, obviously we do expect USB 3.1 Gen 2, and they are pretty much in abundance. So there's five type A connectors in total, as well as a type C. For display purposes, sometimes you might not want to use a graphics card, especially if you are you know, primarily focusing on say your CPU and you wanna be overclocking that. So you wanna take a few things out of the equation. This is especially handy when troubleshooting as well because trying to sort of, you know, limit, I guess the whole system to the least amount of components as possible is definitely something worth doing. So with that in mind, there is a single DisplayPort 1.2 connector. In terms of audio for anyone who, you know, really sort of, you know, focuses on their audio, as we mentioned earlier, it is powered by Soundcore 3D and there is 7.1 channel audio and then an optical SB diff port as well. But to be honest, because this is EVGA, I would probably be pairing this with their new sound card, which we have done a review on as well, and we will link to in the description below. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not really gonna focus on kind of performance and stuff like that. I will power this, it, power this up and maybe get a few kind of B-roll shots of I guess how it looks at the moment and I want to know in the comments section below what type of video would you like to see us do with this because a run-of-the-mill kind of bog standard I guess Z390 review this was more like an unboxing and an overview doing a review I know how everything's going to perform at stock it's going to be pretty much the same as every other Z390 board that we've reviewed on this channel in you know the last couple of months so there was no point doing that I want to do something a little bit different so that's why maybe we'll do something involving i don't know a, a no rgb build maybe we could do a time lapse with it or maybe we could do you know trying to see if we can push our i9 9900k further than we have on any other board hopefully with the kind of you know way that they've set out the phases and done the power delivery on this maybe we can get a little bit more than you know even some of the top end boards from azus gigabyte and msi let us know in the comment section below other than that i will see you in the next one see you later guys bye bye so when it does come to overclocking, you are going to obviously want to put, well, no. Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today I've got something, well, quite special. You out there? Yeah. <laughs> you were like, I thought you were going to like cough or sneeze or something. <laughs> also with it, you will find that, um, I don't know where I'm going now. Get out. I want the EVGA Z390 Dark. I like it very much. Hey everyone, I'm, I can't even do it. <laughs>